champion select though because this is going to come down to it now so much pressure on the side of tes yep. red side has been highly prized here it's won every game top side counter picks have been the name of the game freak let's see what we're going to get into this time around uh see if we do have the orange showing up in the bands again if we are going to have the carry carry matchup uh, because Bin's already shown that he's very willing to play uh, play the tanks for for Sooning uh, if they if they are going to leave it up, and if you're in a situation where 369 is basically guaranteed to be able to get a counter pick on red, Lucian Cinder Band keeps coming through, Camille Band keeps coming through, and Italy not one card that wants to play here. We'll see what else comes out of this band phase. Botlane has really not been the name of the game here. It's it's been top focused every single time, and, and it's. Counter pick has mattered. Getting the early blind pick tank hasn't been enough. We saw the old LPL standby. I went and looked at what are the top laners that are played in the LPL and blue side. Renekton is number one, and it has a positive win rate. <laughs> was not good enough over in game three, so you got to find something else. Last time Sooning was on blue, it was Orn. That wasn't enough either. I want to see what can happen, though. Yeah, I mean, Renekton is Bin's most played champion of all time. But in the semifinals in the LPL, 369 picked Quinn into it, and uh, they also got ganks on top side, which subsequently yeah. kind of ran over the game. So uh, they definitely have that in the back of their minds when they're considering these blind picks. The Azir actually taken out uh, away from Angel, so signaling maybe more of the Orianna priority that the Knight has had for most of this series. I want to see what they can get out of this one. Are we going to see? We don't see the first pick, Jin. We hadn't since the first couple of games anymore. The least Sin had been so highly prized. And you got two seconds to pick what you want. It's Ezreal. Ezreal's going to be early pick here for Wanfeng. Looked pretty solid the first time around. But you got still a lot left open. The Orianna has been contested back and forth as well. Jackie Love just kind of stopped playing the Senna that he had played so much of throughout Worlds. Uh, it was, I mean, it was, it was Carson's most played, five graves games coming into the series. Said, nah, it, it, you know, we're finally back onto it now. This one finally comes through. But Jackula's most played is also Senna. That one has been, has been left on the table a lot as well. Yeah, and the NSS was talking a lot about the uh, the Jin priority before uh, last game, which then kind of dropped off, and, and they've got the option here to pick it up for uh, Jackie Love. But the Leona, Ezreal, has been such a great combination with yeah. the offensive capabilities. And Huang Feng and Sword Art played it so aggressively, going for these kills, earning flash cooldowns by themselves, earning kills for themselves in the bottom side of the map. It really did just determine a completely different story for Sooning. I want to see if they get more of a dive comp together. What's going to come through? You can't really pick a top lander and can contest it with bands. They're going to go for a Akali right. as the answer. Exciting stuff coming through here. Angel picked it up for Worlds. Had not played it in the LPL in the summer split. And actually top esports say, so you know what? Screw it. Take your top lane counter pick. We're grabbing Orn right now. We are team fighting you, and we will ban away the counters to Orn. Yeah, Orn shows up uh, as we are kind of expecting here, but not in the way that we thought it was going to. It's actually 369 and TES, that blind pick uh, for the top side. They've got both their solo laners locked in so early here. Yep. And banning out Gangplank also kind of does protect the Jin, as they're talking about the Jin before, because when Jin ults and opens up, and then it's a very easy target for Gangplank, um, that could be another one of the things they may be trying to protect here, uh, trying to get more safety for the bottom side of the map, put more into Jackie Love, because he definitely has been a super strong Jin, and uh, they started out the series that way. Still interesting that, that uh, Top Esports actually blinded both solo lanes in this game. Orianna got answered by Akali. Yes, they of course threw in two bands to cover Orn. That helps of course quite a bit, but it means their last two picks are gonna be answering bot lane, which of course is also being answered by bands, by the way, right? Ezreal Leona are blinded. They're throwing in the Senna band. They're gonna throw in a bit more on top of that one. And then we'll see if this two on two is gonna look good enough for TES because they said, okay, we're gonna make you play against Orn for the first time all worlds. All right, so there it is. So is it going to be the misfortune then on the side of uh, of Jackie Love? He's he's really being kind gonna, of pinched here on the AD carry role. My, I'm going to blindly say Ash Lulu as a two on two that TES started playing at Worlds. The Lulu was a new pickup for Uyanja at Worlds. 
He plays it exclusively alongside Ash, and it lets Jackie Love be a late game carry that cannot be attacked. And it would go really nicely with their five on five setup that they have right now. You have Orianna Orange scaling for those team fights later with uh, Graves, Ash, and if you supplement that with Lulu for it, that is a tremendous five on five setup. Meanwhile, Sooning's showing the Akali early. They do have the Assassin locked in. They're going to have to play a much more spread out style, looking for those kills. They lock yeah. in the Jacks here once again for Bin into the orange tank on the top side. Now, Whimsy is very good against Akali, and it's very good against Jax, but you can't polymorph both of them. So one of them, if they are both fed, one of them is still going to kill the back line. And it's not going to be Lulu. It's going to be Tom Kench instead as safety for whoever that assassin is jumping on. And it should make it pretty easy to save someone against Leona, but there is still a lot diving in. Jarvan over the top as well. It is still a very heavy dive comp for Suning. And there's only a little bit of peel on the top esports side. Yeah, I mean, but that little bit of peel is so important. The Des talk touched on it at the beginning of the day, how TES have really prioritized counter engage in a lot of their situations. So picking up that uh, Tom Kench to add that bit of disengage from a Leona that will collapse on you. Plus, you do have, especially uh, once Tom Kench gets to level 11 and you get the rank two in the ultimate and you get that extra range with it, it does give you some sort of means for traversing the map and trying to deal with some of the split style game that you're going to face when you're facing a team that's running an Akali Jax as their double solo lanes. All right, final thoughts out of the coaches. Do or die for top esports. A week ago, they gave us the first ever reverse sweep at Worlds. It's not quite so dire. They managed to win game two, but they've still got to win back to back games to stay alive at Worlds. Deep breath here, Freak. Yeah. It's just best of ones you have to visualize from this point on for top esports, one game at a time. They are the LPL champions. They want to be the world champions. And a lot is riding on their shoulders. Meanwhile, Suning knows they're about to have the eyes of a nation on them. They took down JD Gaming and they are, well, they got two chances now. They got two chances mm -hmm. to knock down top esports and be the last LPL representative left. And it'll be on Suning then to be the team to have the LPL three peak to continue the LPL era. Otherwise, it's Don Juan taking the trophy, and we are back to the Korean teams on top. We'll see if it can happen here. Top Esports, can they win two straight, or does Suning close it out in game four or game five? The Orn comes through. They put a lot of faith on Jackie Love to be a big carry. On the Ash, Tom Kench gonna keep the back line safe. A lot of assassination potential through. Ben, he is a carry top laner. He gets counter pick against the Orn, grabs the Jax, has a Jarvan to maybe upset that matchup even further. And we are out of the rift. <laughs> now, remember last game when they picked the Jacks? It is such a fortuitous start for Bin because of the early attempted gank by Karsa and the jungle invade follow-up by SOFM, setting them up for that dive, all these early kills, the early money, the wave control set up to be able to bounce back that minion wave, all really set up Jax to become the monster that he was. This time around, you can't be expecting that same repeat of the start. But for Sooning, they've got their eyes on the prize. And if you are the team from the LPL, you take out the number one and number two seeds, there is so much riding on your shoulders. With great power comes great responsibility, and they will have to deliver. Ward Sweep does come through. They take out the early vision. And they're actually pulling with the Leona Ezreal lane. A lot of times uh, with the Ezreal, they opt not to pull so that you can actually get to the minion wave uh, so you don't get pushed in early on. Yep, not going to be the case this time around, though. They will happily go to lane late. Meanwhile, Karsa solos his red buff, takes the chickens pretty well as well. Always important, try to fight that from long range. You can apply red buff to multiple different units there as you fight that uh, Raptor camp. Top lane is back and forth. Quick bonk gets grasped. <laughs> and level two first will come to Bin, and that will be as something to play around. I think there's a very easy interaction for the Jax Counter-Strike. When he when 369 casts Bellows Breath, you wait till it's done, you start Counter-Strike, and you will dodge every possible attempt to break the brittle. And then once it's done, out you go. 
Plus, uh, a little known thing for the Bellows Breath, it, it actually only applies Brittle on the end of the poof when he spits out the last little bit. So champions that have mobility like Jax, you can actually dodge out as long as, even if you get hit with the beginning of the Bellows Breath, if you dodge the last bit, you don't get the Brittle on Already you. on the bot lane. They have found the best target. They have found Tom Kenji and Jai is going to be hit here. He does not have much more to do. He's going to burn the flash. They find the knockup though on a Jackie Love and they're chasing for both. They're going to get the kill. Ash is gone. First blood in, but there's a regank. How's the re-engage going to look? TP's coming in, but a little bit late in this side. They find the near sight. They find a slow. They find the chance of a kill on SOFM. It's going to be Carson trying his damnedest. Can he Fuck get the him. attacks? It's getting blocked by Juan Fung. Finally a kill, but they will trade him back. It's a two for one so far, and they want more. Send him back home, three to one. Uyan Jai is gone. Well, looks like another fortuitous start break as this is a 1,000 gold lead for Sooning. Three and a half minutes into the game. Bottom lane gank from SOFM on the Jarvan. What a clear from him. Gets in there, is able to force out the flash from Yuan Jia. Make sure that he's far away from Jackie Love. And Jackie Love didn't flash the EQ from Jarvan here. So uh, SOFM just changes targets. He goes right on Jackie Love. No flash from him. He used the heal. Once that hits, Sword Art follows up, stunned up, and he is dead. Now they've got a numbers advantage if they decide, decide to match your teleports. And this is going to mean, again, so much for the game plan. Huang Feng there tries to flash in front of so Karsa. Much time. He's trying to uh, block the auto attacks from Graves because he can't get behind him. But what it really means is the ramifications for the bottom lane. Once again, the Ezreal Leona lane gets to play so aggressively here. Uh, summoner spells were burned. Yes, Jackie Love saved his flash. He went down. Um, but it's the two kills to the Ezreal for your super early tier. So he's going to be stacking up very quickly. It's interesting to see Juan Fung actually go for the more scaling option because if I'm if I'm Jackie Love here, I'm like, okay, we are not just going to get <laughs> run guys go big lane. You look for kills, more damage. Well, yeah. I mean, ultimately, yeah. I mean, Pickaxe lets you really play aggressively and, and put TES down. And if you think that, hey, this lane is going to stop being volatile, look, we got our lead that's just stacked here and get an early Mar Maramana, that's fine. But you have kind of squandered the gold lead by not letting you win the two on two any harder. Well, he's got a double buff for himself too. So That'll help for a bit. That's uh, that's definitely gonna give power for the meantime. Uh, it also means, since so many cooldowns were used on the bottom side of the map, that uh, Bin gets left alone in that top side matchup with the Orn. Uh, gets a consistently threatened 369. And since he uses teleport early, he trades aggressively, trying to force out uh, the same from 369. Yeah, you want to try to get him to, to burn that as close as possible, get his health and mana back up. Will there be much of a fight down here? Of course, level 9 on both. Temporary health and mana lead for 369. And he's got, yeah, and you can see, right? Hops away from what would be the last part of the W. Walks away. I believe he got grasp off just in time, but either way, doesn't mean too much. 6 CS lead. Carso recalling near the lane if there is any kind of a gank. And constantly Ben jumps away to not be hit with the brittle. All right, now, with this Jarvan, again, you're looking to make uh, a plays off of other crowd control that you have set up in your lanes, but you can also turn your eyes towards an Akali once Akali's level six, because Knight's Flash uh, was used already, a uh, long cooldown still left on it, and if you get level six kill for Akali, for Angel, uh, it actually can snowball incredibly quickly for the side lanes as well, because then Angel gets to threaten uh, for those roams, for those ganks. He would probably want to go purchase first. He still has not gone to get his first purchase back yet, um, but that can definitely be another point of pressure. So SOSM has a lot of options open to him. Meanwhile, Karsa, true to the whole series, still eyes on objectives. And your final Drake is the easiest Drake to solo. It has pretty mediocre single target damage output. It's not terribly tanky, so Karsa has no problems doing this on Graves. Of course, he did get one kill, so that's double Longsword plus Red Smite in pretty early on. Even has some clutch honey fruit to be essentially full health and mana for the next part of this one. So the game state is a five runner gold lead versus a Drake lead, and that's not too bad. Juan Fung burns his teleport now to get back into lane. This time does have the pickaxe, and, and now he can start playing for the lane. So it's time for Jackula's first recall, doesn't get spotted. We'll see if it's okay. It is going to be towards the Blade of the Ruin King version of the build. Now, there's not a lot of health stackers on this team. Generally speaking, it, you know, you're not hitting that heavy of a front line, but it is for X melee. You're going to get a lot of value out of Ruin King Hurricane. All right, he goes for the invade here and has the deep ward to do the confidence with. So with a pushing Akali mid lane here, 
not too scared of a possibility. Support Realm's coming out uh, pretty quickly, though. And honestly, I don't think there should be an overload on the uh, on the invade. He does know that the smite was used. SFM has smite, but can't see. Phase rush, decent damage. Ward control back and forth. I like that. That's really <laughs> smart. Chomp it, throw it out of range. No chance for SFM to smite. Kills the control afterwards. Pretty well done. Yeah, quite nicely there. The support rope pays off, Freak. Yeah, it does. He yards up to the top side. Red secured. SLP will be pretty happy to take the scuttle crab, though, on his way out. And this does mean you will have 2v1 on the bottom side. Uh, Jackie Love's got double summoners, though, on the Ash and, and level 6. And you can see the positioning on the mini map. He's playing really safely back there. So Angel is going to fight over this wave a little bit as Knight pushes it down. Farm pretty close between these two players. Ultimately, wouldn't be a, a CS difference to write home about. Plus or minus one if Angel gets the entire wave. Bot shoved in. Jaculif himself actually has more farm, and, and that's with him dying, right? At level two and then not having the TP to rejoin the lane. So the bot lane is being well played here on the TES side. They brought this game reasonably well back. Still feels a bit Sooning favored and still want to see what their jacks can do. But now it's time for the top Herald to be attacked. That's actually Angel dodging every little piece of damage from Knight. But it's not going to be much. Yeah, and especially with Orianna on full mana items right now, they, they do not have uh, a lot of power there. So even with the ward, you see Eon Jaw just walk straight through mid, right back to bottom. They're like, yeah, you know, we're giving this up. We are, no, we're giving this up. Everybody is in accordance because uh, Sword Art and Huang Feng had just also gotten back off of their reset. You saw them trying to maybe bait a small engage at a Leona. Yuan Jia just stayed in the fog of war, said if you EQ in, I will eat afterwards, and then we can re-engage with their summoners down, or at least your cooldown's gone. Didn't mean anything, though. Bot lane's still about to lose his first turret, or a turret plate, I should say. Cars is sticking around bot side, hits the Scryer's Bloom to see if there's any wards around, or if Jarvan was nearby. He wasn't. Now he is. Ultimately, it's going to be not too much pressure just yet from bottom side. They have to hand over blue first. Make sure it's not stolen by the red buff. That's just fine. But now here's the Herald Summon in mid. And it's going to be just two quick plates. Angel could choose to share. Is he going to walk closer or not? He's kind of on the edge of plate range. There he goes. Yeah, he's got it for sure. Gets one second. Uh, and honestly, yeah, trying to fund the gun blade. Ooh, ooh, they find the stun. They find a lot of damage. Good luck with this one, Hong Fung. Burns the flash away as well. And Karsh is here. Flashes in for the slow. They need the rest of the damage. The Q is going to land. Shutdown comes through. And Sword Art, the other one left alive. But they can go for the dive. They know they have Devour. They can keep him safe. No problem at all. Spits them right back in. The flash out of Sword Art. Oh, it's back for distance. Karsa can't get it, though. <laughs> yep, not quite there with the distance. You like the, the going for the play, though. Uh-oh. Uh, on the top side, the reverse will occur. Can 369 live here? Does not have his ult anymore. SFM is here. Bin is here. They find the knockup. They might find the stun. But here comes the TP out of night, and there's just no dive to be had. I think even without TP, yeah. they could have done it. 369 is too tanky. That's looking pretty risky there. I think they're kind of happy to get out that cooldown and back away from it. Does allow Angel on that Akali to push mid two after sharing some of the money with that Rift Trail. He's going to be funding his Hobie. Gunblade very quickly. Look at the scoreboard. TES have tied the game back up off of a catastrophic early game that went three kills to one and like bot lane was sacked. They've caught up. Again, as they showed in the previous game, they will not give up in these games no matter how bad it goes early on. Jackie Love in the brush, able to get the start on the Ezreal and then flashes forward to finish this kill. Uh, and allow Karsa to rack in some of the money. So extra funds will go into the graves here um, and be able to uh, have a bigger presence around this Jarvan. Uh, this is going to be a completely offensive look here for Karsa. I'll we'll see what area he can actually make his play off of. Ash Arrow right back up for Jackie Love. Easy wave clear. Nice Blade of the Rune King completion already there. That's going to be nice, but Manamune Sheen is not far off in terms of power. So still a pretty close 2 on 2. Always optimizing around, maximizing ward gold. Yuanja always lets the AD carry get the last hit. Usually saves the control wards there as well. It might mean Karsa can rejoin that bottom lane to kill Graves. His most played of worlds and so far a great start. Sword Art roaming towards mid. Goes through his own vision, but I believe spotted walking past the Drake. So they should know that he's walking towards mid. You can see Knight hugging the top side of the lane. And they don't know when Sword Art might recall, so he's continuing to play safe. Angel cannot force this aggression. Doesn't have the... Uh, cutlass done for the on-demand slow, so easy wave clear and Knight can walk away. And he can All right. the wall to check. Dragon going to be started right back up for TES, though, and it's going to be completed recall for SFM. That means they will be able to start stacking them. 
Unless you get a Miracle Steal. I mean, Sword Art could ult. You know, there's always a chance. <laughs> now they know they see him on the ward as... Okay, easy smite. If that, And I like the timing, though. If there's ever an early smite, you got the steal. And I think that's actually the best timing because none of your spells do more than smite. So hope he screws up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're going for those those ones early on, the, the damage of your ability is not really comparing to that of the true damage from Smite. Later on, you can get to different scenarios when you have AP mid laners getting tremendous amounts of first. But uh, Ezreal also, not a really big cost to throwing that out early on. TES right now, get the raw stats dragons, though. Right? Mountain and Infernal, they're just, you know, raw attack damage and ability power, armory magic resist. It's going to help a lot considering the fact that, I mean, they're actually on kind of a stat stacking champions in general. So, uh, tend to like this quite a bit. You still got a very, very tight gold game, but I take the dragons and more potential. Now, Knight going to get found out. Can he get there in time? He's trying, and he chomps him, but there's still going to be too much damage. Stopwatch buys another couple of seconds, but how do you live? How could you possibly? Burns the flash, shock if not in time. Sword Art, though, will drop, and Uyanja finds himself the kill. What is up with Halo Blade supports? <laughs> They're able to buy enough time with the Devourer, with the stopwatch to get a counter kill for themselves. And as you're going over the dragon setup here from TS, remember that TS are the ones with the five on five champions, with the setup here for fighting those later dragon fights. It's Sooning that are looking for the split play. Sooning with the Akali and Jax side lanes. I think I figured it out, Kobe. Why SFM keeps doing G2 Flare? He's representing his group. It's like, this is for G2, mm. all right? They fell too early at the World Championship. This is for you. All right, well, X Flash into Ultimate, into the knockup. Eon Job flashes forward for the Devourer, gets him into tower range for a stopwatch. And you can tell from the minimap, you know, nobody else was coming at this moment, but they buy enough time just themselves to get a counter kill. And it is only money, you know, into Tom Kench's pocket, so it's not uh, the biggest deal there, but it does buy a lot of extra time. It does mean they don't have the extra support on the map for roaming around, for getting your deep vision, so you kind of take back some of the map control and some of the time as a cost for going for that mid play. As a benefit, though, now Knight has no stopwatch, he has no flash, and you're facing a level 11 Akali, rank 2 ultimate here, ready to go, four kills on that Orianna. All right now, top's being pushed in. Karst is still sticking around to defend. Ben's like, yeah, we're good. I love dabbing Pangu. Blue handed over solo. Pretty easy there for Knight. I actually gets help from Yanja. I am curious what items 369 goes for. I think it's actually not correct to optimize around passive upgrades because you're just an armor stacker this game. Akali will never target you. And I think you can honestly ignore Ezreal's spells. So I like Sunfire Bramble Vest. I'm just curious what he gets next. Yeah, probably we'll still see the Abyssal later um, as uh, your little bit of magic, just because it's it's so efficient of a of an Orn item upgrade. Yeah, it's just weird spending and getting like 1,500 gold worth of MR that just isn't a useful stat. Like, yes, you will take some magic damage, but I'm actually not sure it's optimal. Uh, it's maybe a longer discussion. We, we than can we place want. our bets. Uh, I, yeah, I like he may the, do it. Yeah, I, I like discussions like this. You know, uh, like they were mentioning the uh, the shed itemization, whether you're going to go solo queue damage or right. or, uh, or team fight pro play cooldown reduction. Mm -hmm. I will bet for the for the efficiency of the abyssal because you know you also have close range. You can make use of the aura for your ultimate for Oriana. True. Shockwaves to do a bit more damage. But what's what's your bet? Play, uh, I mean, Iceborne? No, okay, there's the Catalyst, so it is Abyssal, but I think Iceborne wouldn't be a terrible choice. Regardless, that's going to be turret damage. Angel can walk up and help finish this one. Karsa can look up for the wave. And actually, I mean, Angel had the chance to walk up earlier, but of course he has to respect what could have been the re-engage. And in a wave or two, they will knock this down anyway. Yeah, and I think this is really important too. When you can open up, as we said, this mid lane for the Akali, this is this is your pretty decent point of power. Spellbook Knight has actually switched over to Ignite Exhaust Oriana, so he's going to be more fearsome yeah. uh, than we thought. It's just uh, you know somebody to try and pick Can't on flash here. Anyway. Plus, he's got basically another summoner spell in his Seraph's Transform, so he's got the shield. That is a combat ready Oriana freak. Yeah. Burns away. Now he's just got TP. I think he just like walked up and ignited yeah, and like yeah. pieced it out. That's a stun though. That is good damage. He can't burn the W just yet. He's out of health. And that's a kill for Jackie Love. How does one fun get away? He burns Arcane Shift. He burns Flash. He lives. And Jarvan is coming, but no one else can do so. Everyone else has an easy TP stop in the kit. So they have to walk downwards. 
This is now called out. They know Akali pushed in the wave. Easy walk away for TES. And again, this is calculated from TES. These are not, you know, random set up plays. They continually have the brush advantage. Jackie Loves fires these arrows off for bottom side because they know all they have to do is play to dragon fights. You're forcing a Jax team with an Akali to come five on five, the Orn Oriana setup. This is right into top esports game plan here. They're just full steam ahead. Yes, we're losing mid lane. You know, yes, you do have possibilities for outplays in 1v1 scenarios, in split push scenarios. Um, but if we just keep forcing around bottom side, around these dragons, we will be able to pull you to us with the threat of the Dragon Soul. Cloud Soul, you know, obviously not uh, the best, not the greatest one uh, or most powerful for them for combat, but uh, still will be a decent chunk. Sure, yeah. I mean, you, you still don't hate move speed, all things considered. And now you got the chance at a very, very early Dragon Soul in this game, and it's going to make things, of course, a little bit easier. Looking for a tower dive, potentially. It seems so difficult. I don't know how you finish this kill. There's, like, almost no way. Yeah, they can stop recalls, I guess. But, like, are you going to burn Leon ult for that? Probably not. Still, a lot of waves denied in bot lane. They've got to play super far back. Turret will be answered, or I should say finished. And that's two turrets to zero. And a Jax in the top lane is free farming. Yeah, sure, 369's held on pretty well as we get the replay of them fighting up there, burning the flash. But Kars is here now. I believe, yeah, he, he went by a ward. The Umbral Glaive got triggered uh, off the fact that it only does that if there's a ward nearby. So Bin's like, all right, I see you. I'll walk away. I'll just put my new trick it down soon enough. All right, so we are just going to have the throw down then at the dragon. And and honestly, yes, they got two towers down here for Sunni, but three and a half minutes. That is your timer before TS are forcing at this at this dragon soul. So they really have to push into overdrive right now uh, with these possibilities for these side lane plays. You know, things like forcing that flash out one v one from Bin are going to be where you try and make the make that punishment happen. Now you start roaming out roaming out sword art. He's going to be the kind of linchpin that brings it all together for you to bring the crowd control uh, for the extra kills for this play. Early QSS and for Huan Feng needs to be able to survive Ash Arrows more defensively with the Iceborne as well. Though he is facing a lot of magic damage uh, since, you know, the Orianna and Orn are going to probably contribute a fair bit. Uh, regardless, still goes for armor stacking because of Graves and Ash. I don't think it's wrong, just an interesting choice because you can go Triforce this game, I feel. Uh, regardless, uh, we already know the Catalyst was picked up. The rest of Abyssal Mask before too long for 369. We know Drake is in 230, and the Triforce should be done in time for Bin. Pros average about 400 gold per minute. That's an easy one to kind of keep in mind. It's 400 gold per minute, and in the course of three minutes, you get the 1,200 gold needed to get the rest of the item. <laughs> this should be no problem for Ben. How many times have we scrolled over Raptor Camp to see that? But here we go, top side. Uh, Angel gets a pretty nice chunk. He yep. sees a Tom Kench and says, okay, fine. Yep. Good move. And of course, we have a while until the Drake comes up, so we can go wherever he wants. and have to play around bottom side just yet. Karsa, going to see SOFM. But that's kind of the benefit of the cloud map, is you run really fast around here, and you can usually dodge these skill shots with the bonus move speed. That's an easy recall stop. Almost gets the board in time, lets the 30 gold go to SOFM. He gets it anyway by the being the sweeper, and they do it for round two. But now blinding him, they could go for the engage. The 369 ult here. Is it a possibility to kill SOFM? He burns his smite to get the movement speed, and walks away. Hmm, minute 45 left on the Dragon Soul 2, and... Honestly, the increase in pressure here from Sooning is looking pretty good as they push in the bottom side. Uh, it was deterred a little bit top side when Tom Ken showed up, so Angel actually couldn't press any further forward on the Akali. I think that the ultimate will be up uh, for the Dragon, though, so the attempt won't be super punishing yeah. if they decide to try and do the, yo, let's push out the side lanes and then collapse for the pincer. Akali's going to feel safe like all the time here. You can take a little bit of damage and then gunblade it back up. It's not a big issue. Karsa, he wants to recall around now anyway, but Suning can try as hard as they can to knock down the rest of top lane before that fight happens. You might not get to spend the money in time and reset, but now SOFM wants to go to the backside. He's going to look for Knight, finds it, jumps right back out, burns the ulti, Shockwave only finds damage. Good reflexes, Wanfeng. Gets Arcane Shift up in time, but I believe now Jarvan will be ulti-less for when this Drake fight happens. Angel will barely have time to finish the turret, recall, and show up, and he won't have time to go for a flank. Yeah, kind of kind of interesting here, as mid lane priority will mean a lot leading up to the Dragon. Uh, Angel's going to push in top side. You have 30 seconds, so he gets to reset there as uh, as you have to catch both mid and 
top side waves. This does give time for Sunin to try and reset and bring their control wards over. Yeah. You say Uyanja already heading out on the Leona with his. Angel buys two more control wards for himself. They are prepared. And so FM knows he can easily get away from a 369 ulti with the flag and drag, so that's not going to be an issue for him. But the Drake is up in 10 seconds. Knight has come down. Angel has recalled and come across the map. Has the finish Leandries. No stopwatches on pretty much anyone. So if you can find that kill, if you can isolate them, that's going to be one going through. 369, not quite hit though. And here comes the potential fight. Jack a bit low. Yenja the same. Looking for a slow up towards Angel. He's going to be okay. Bin still pushing the bottom side. And Suning right now in control of the various lanes and the jungle, but now this Ghost. could be a target. He's already jumped away once. We've got a slow and a freeze frame on my side. Yeah. This is a tough one, because the fight's kind of happening. I hear it. We can maybe do it from audio. I feel like they caught up. We got an ash arrow. It landed. They're trying the very best they can. I'm going to turn up my audio. Is it going to be enough? Flashes burn on one or, side or the other. Or not, or not. Burr. I don't know if live is also paused like us. Maybe we sound just ridiculous right now. I think we let the game audio help it. Oriana dropped. That's huge. Orange still alive. Darvid ultimate. Oh, and this back. is Suning looking great right now. Pick up several, but on the backside, Kars is alive. 1v3. Can he kite it away? No, he cannot. Suning take the crucial ace right in front of the Drake. Right before your eyes, Freak. What a play <laughs> from Suning. <laughs> I'm expecting a replay out of this one. Don't worry about it. The Drake will be claimed. And the curse of Dragon Soul Point continues. Oh my gosh, it actually is evolving to a curse over this series. As once again, TS got the three dragons stopped by Suning in the jungle fight here. Here's the replay. All right, let's go for real this time. Orn went in. They had already chased them off the dragon, and so they did start it up, but Sword Art finding the engage here on tonight, having to flash out. That was huge as he goes in here. It's only Orn's damage on Huangfeng. He's going to flash over with the Graves to finish it off, but Akali and Jax with the flanks running amok in the back backside of it for the entire yeah. time. And there was that late Jarvan ult that we heard deep into the fight that allows the re-engage. And honestly, the carries dropped first. Ash and Orianna died super early in the battle. Jackalif still had flash. Uyanja, I feel like he ate kind of a bad target. It, you know, kind of only the Jarvan was threatening. And now round two gonna find even more. Nice knockup. SOFM says, okay, you've got backup, no big worries. But the Asher is gonna find it. Another QSS burn, but they can find it with 369. Not quite the knockup, but SOFM. Running low on health, Baron helps, they find another slow, Huan Feng, low on HP, and they find that kill right in front of Baron. The health bar is so low, and it's gonna force the recall away. SOFM can barely fight for this. His smite is down, Karsas will be up. 5v4, can they do it? Does TES take this fight? 3k down, but up a member. When does Bin go in? When does the squad rejoin? SOFM taking red buff so he can heal. Knock up onto Bin. They find a bit more. Leona cannot find the stun. They look for more, though. It's on Uyenja. He's not an easy target. And they're going to go for the re-engage. They're going to find the kill in a sword art. It's 5v3, and no one has found a kill, but they have gotten the Baron reset. And this means Juan Fung can come back alive, and he has TP. He can rejoin in 14 seconds. So go for the ward clears, and Suning feels comfortable. I like that, just poking them out, not committing to it, and allowing the reset here. Bin starts it back up after they clear all the wards, but uh, he gets called off of it by the team. Maybe if you had like Death Dance completed as well, they try and force that, but no sneaky play there. That would be a, a bit of a flip, as they started to say. Yeah. 3,000 gold difference, two Drake lead, but that I don't think makes up for the fact that Suning feel more powerful. Angel joins Suning to replace Knight two years ago. And right now, he's looking great. Five and zero in game four of the world's semifinals. Better mid winning right now. Ooh. Yeah, Freak. Honestly, that last team fight in the jungle, that was so much for Sooning. Turns out the Angel of Death has come to Summoner's Rift and he's come to send the souls of TES back to the fountain. Five kills, 700 gold bounty on his head. Nice what try from him. Suning decides to walk sideways, could have EQ'd and buffered it against the incoming arrow, would have been stunned on the other side of the wall. Didn't need it, he's totally fine. Vin still farming in the side of the map, one, one, and three, two and a half items, the Aegis is in. You can see that turret loses health very rapidly, but he cannot tower dive knight, so back he goes.
Okay, SFM getting a little deep once again into our risky position. See how he gets out of this one. EQ right over the Orn, no problem. Not a problem at all, 369. His second most played in summer was Orn, by the way. Definitely, a, you know, a quite comfortable pick for him. Uh, TES, they won the LPL playing champions like this, you know, fairly often. He had a pretty big champion pool, still played it several times. Jackie Love still farming, though. Still an incredible player, has not had his best series, I want to be clear. I think he's really overstepped a lot of times, and we've had some mechanical mistakes from him. And that's certainly been a meaningful point here. Angel jumps back. This could be a decent target. Keep in mind, he goes in. Oh my word, that damage, he's dominating. Jackie Love oversteps again, and he drops the opposing mid laner. This could be even more. 369 burns the ulti. Is there even a play to be had? Angel jumps the wall perfectly on the Akali, a six kill assassin. Jackie Love, I think he was relying on Uyanja, didn't burn the heal, just died in the belly. Yeah, Angel not messing around here on the Akali level 16. Now this is going to be the Baron start for Sooning. Can they do it without Jackie Love, without the here. Ash carry? Sword Art is here to find the flank play and start the fight instead. Huanfeng over the wall. They got the flag and drag over here as well. This could be a team fight right now, 5v4. Can they get the stun? Not just yet, they're going to keep walking away. No pickups here. They will let Jackie Love respawn. He has Arrow, and he has finished Infinity Edge. So he is on his third major damage item. But they got to keep him safe. Angel has been on point every single fight this game. Breaking 15. Incredible game from him on the biggest stage with the entire world watching. Teleport now uh, used for him to push the bottom lane just to get the minion wave in place first for this dragon. This is the thing. The dragon soul points don't stop coming. TS still on that dragon soul point. Okay. They are more down in gold this time, and there's the engage. Stun, shock with big damage. Bin stays alive. A stun once again finds its target. Up at the top goes SOFM. Knock ups even more. Here comes a Kali over the top as well. Is it enough damage? Bin wants another and Jackie Love drops yet again. They find kill two. They will find kill three. Sooning will not be stopped. They will not be denied their vengeance from the regular season. And they will find another one. Now, Court, sure. Parsa <laughs> finds a kill in a sword art, but it's a three for one team fight in front of an easy Drake and an easy mid tier two. Yeah, Carson gonna get one back for himself, but the rest of Sooning back off for the objective eyes on the bigger prize for themselves. Teleport's available on Bin, so Carson can't pull any further heroics, can't go chasing anybody around, even the low health members, and that will be Dragon Soul number two stopped in the favor of Sooning. As soon as Angel arrives, Ooh. you know death will follow. He got there and he was able to chase down the dive onto Knight. He finds it. They take out the heart of the team fight here for TES once again. He has just been surgical. No death still left on Angel. And this is the original kill. Yeah. With that burn from the Leandri still, goes down within the belly, still gets the kill. What? Crazy burst. Here's another look at the second round. Engage was on to Bin. They take out one of the big carries. The Jack's out of this fight, but the re-engage still. SOFM groups them up. Four people there inside the Jarvan ult. And then out of it, Angel has his eyes on to Knight. Back to the Baron, though. Here's a big, important fight. 5v4, 5v5. Everyone responds and comes back. But there's no Karsa. There is no smite fight. You've got to win this one somehow by yourself. There's a smite on Knight, but he's not anywhere near this battle. Goes for it. Can't find it with Shockwave. Re-engage towards Angel, force him to flash away. Now it's Sword Art in the front line. He is running low on health. One more Q. That'll be a kill. 5v4, the chase. SOFM ults in, buys some time. TB comes back in for Bin, but it is still a 5v4. Is this a fight that Sword Ning can win. 369, not an easy target. Jackie Love reasonably safe in the backside. Karsa back in. SOFM once again gets to safety. 369 does not have the ulti to re engage. And a nice snipe from Ez means decent damage. Baron for a kill, you take that every time. This is going to be, yeah, so much pushing power here with the Baron for Sooning, and they've got the split push to do it. Yes, you don't have teleports, but you have very safe solo laners that can still accomplish it. And Huang Feng on the Ezreal, another safe carry, then go right up mid. They could push pressure all three lanes. Now TES, their eyes are getting so big at the moment, seeing the series slip away, seeing their world's run slip away before their eyes. After taking the championship in summer in the LPL, they have to make some tremendously big play right now. They have to try and catch SN off guard while they're split pushing. If they try and push all three lanes, they need to get a hard force. Jackie Love, Ash Arrow into Orn Ultimate to try and get some picks. TES 
You have to come back from 6,000 gold down. And with the Baron buff still on, we'll see how much more can happen. Consuming Red Bull Baron. He's on a ward. He's going to be fine. Fighting over the big chicken. Takes it with Smite. Well done. Cars is still with a level leave. That doesn't matter. And no Asher is coming across the map. No All right. CC. I mean, he is actually very extended. If they can if they can stun from Fog, they might actually be able to burn him down with uh, Tom Kent stuff. But ultimately, Jackie Love has to be careful. Jackie Love will get the Vowered, will be safe. But that is an important cooldown missing, and mid lane tier 2 will drop. Time is not in top esports' favor right now. Uh, as the 1 3 1 takes its toll, they, they close in on all three. They there damage. it is. Sword Art could be killed. He's going to run out of health. He's going to find a sense. It's not going to matter. Pick. Yes, turrets are picked off, but now can 369 find the re engage? Can he get even more? SOFM going to kill the ward, but that is now flag and drag down. Still no play to be had. They're going to drop turrets on the various sides of the map. It's 6 to 0 in turrets, by the way. Vin is not an easy target either. They're just going to farm. They're going to look for Karsa. Can't get it just yet. SOFM going to dunk into this one. Ulti gets him to safety. Music 9 finally calls the play. They're going to get the knockup. Can they kill SOFM? He's going to get right back out to safety. The cooldowns are short enough. They don't get more than some health bar done. Baron still on for the members of Sooning, so they keep up the pressure here. And there you go. That's why you get Warmogs. SOFM heals right back up after taking a brutal amount of damage on the previous pick. He can EQ over the wall again, heal back up with his Warmogs to stay out of combat, chilling in the breeze. Yep. 369 has to go back to base to heal. Knight wants in, cannot easily shock with Wan Fung. Of course, very easy to Arcane shift that one. And have to, you know, just ignore that play. Bot lane nearly gone. Mid lane at basically one quarter. They are chipping this away. And now here comes the big play. Shockwave not going to land, but Yunja's right behind. Nice. R into E. Gets on the other side of that play. And that means Angel has R2 if he needs it. But now 369 into 1v2 top side. That turret will fall. Great counter punch by Sooning. Ben and SOFM have no problem knocking down that inhibitor turret. One fun low on mana, but still enough for Arcane Shift. Means he is safe, but the Ash Arrow is back up. Can they go for the play? Maybe a uh, smoke screen into arrow. Now that this is down, you should try. You Got should flash. try. I know he has QSS, but at least force the cooldown. No, going top side. They will find Bin. He has the ward, though. He kept it the whole time to make sure he can make that play happen. But maybe the dive can still happen. Ornhorn is up in a second. Drake is in 23 seconds, and Bin is likely to drop. Has to burn the flash now. Here comes the Ornhorn. That is the last ward down. This should be an easy knockup. This should be a very easy kill. Bin should always die. Shut down sadly goes to Tom Kench. But the base is in shambles. They are attacking the bottom side, and Ezult is going to stop some recalls. It's going to stop three recalls. We've seen these plays at world before. World-class AD carries cross-map stopping recalls, oh. and SOFM goes for three more because Suning are going for the Nexus. Karsa trying to stop with Uyanja. They will lose one Nexus oh, behind. Turret. They find a flash slow. They find Huan Funk for some damage. 369 is here. Have Suning bitten off more than they can chew. 369 does not find the knockup though. He finds his health bar down to 2,000. Sword Art may be a target. Does have flash though. Can easily get over the wall. Not gonna have to burn it. 369 is low. Top and jungle, still dead for Su Ning. This Drake needs to be claimed for TES, but they are going to first recall and get their health bars back. The timing is so tight, though. SOFM is up in 15 seconds, and Bin is up in five. And Huan Feng is being allowed to take the Drake in a 3v5. Kobe, I've seen these plays before. They, they can't do it. There's no, there's no way that TS can actually do anything about this Cloud Soul. Oh. It is denied once again. Sooning also opening up the base with that inhibitor going down due to Bin buying time on the jacks. Yes, he's caught, but two ward jumps and a flash used by Bin. Then the ultimate interrupt on the recalls. Huang Feng and SOFM using his body on Jarvan to go buy that time to take down the inhibitors. This TES base is just held together by strings at this moment. They do have solid setup for the front line there. Orange trying to take yeah. up the turret and get some back uh, door damage on it, but it's going to be hard to bully through. Double Jax. lock it. Jax Finally going in. for the split. Yeah, he is. I mean, it's open inhibitor, or sorry, dead inhibitor, and only one X's turret. Bin can easily win the game if unanswered. This is a, a guaranteed requirement out of TES to try to handle that one. Obviously, he is ahead in the side lane, guarding an angel not far away. Three offensive items already in. He is gigantic. Knight can do his best to wave clear. That's not a problem. We can see that Maw had to come through for Jackie Love. He needed some MR to survive. Ezreal, Leona, Akali jumping on top of him. 
I mean, four deaths with the Tom Kench, it's tough. It is so incredibly tough right now. You've got an inhibitor down. You're facing a, a seven kill Akali split push with a Jax split push on the other side. Them having both of their teleports available. This is just, this is a doomsday scenario. As Sooning have pressure on Baron, they clear out the vision and they force TES to panic. Having to deal with pressure on all sides of the map. Sooning looking to single-handedly take down the first and second LPL. Sees Jackula barely lives. That's why I'm not going to find him. They get a bit of damage over the top, but they're not going to get the kills just yet. Karsa is going to die. They will trade back the support. Uyan just here. Can he keep the teammates alive? Angel's in. Does not find the kill. Two for zero TES. Two for one, I should say. They will spit Jackula back out, but Angel finds R2 Flash and lands it on top of Jackie Love. Perfection into the E backwards. And now is there a re-engage? I mean, the carries are alive, right? Jungle plus solos, that's enough here. That's easy. And keep in mind, there was no smite for TES unless Knight Spellbook's over, which he may have. This Baron is unsmiteable. Angel is so good. Legendary now on the Akali. He left his Shuriken in the Shroud to take it back, knowing he was going to dive super deep there. there. They're two man again. There's no way they're going to stop this. I mean, they've got it. SOFM is so tanky and Ben does so much damage. And they're stuck in the base. This is Baron. This is Baron number two. No problem at all. Sooning on the precipice of not just knocking down JD Gaming three to one, but knocking down top esports three to one as well. Now looking for the attempts over the wall. They see it's at 1K. A random tongue lash is the chance, and it's not going to happen. Baron is claimed yet again. Sooning this close to closing out the series. What a story from them. What a climb for this Sooning team. And they are on the precipice of upsetting a, now the number one LPL seed after already taking down number two. Here's the dive. They wanted to take advantage of Jackie Love. Yuan Jia gets the devour this time around, but Angel preps. He throws his shuriken into the cloud, then uses his R2 to go for the execute, knowing he could just take his shuriken right back out. Surgical maneuver. Even with the Tom Kench there protecting him, he takes down Jackie Love, setting his team up for the Baron. Magnificent performance from Angel with the entire world watching to get his team into the finals. And don't let the scoreboard that shows the game time and the Drake count fool you. Because this game is not close. It's 10 to 1 in turrets. Sooning have had control almost the entire game. They have a single turret between them and victory. And this Nexus is going to be very, very tough to keep alive. TES must try. Death cap upgraded. Void Staff, they find a okay. stun, they find another pick. SOFM is gone before he can do anything. And that is the makings of potential. He is dead as the Drake comes alive. If TES can somehow keep their inhibitors safe and keep the waves in an okay spot, there is no smite to contest Dragon Soul. Lots of pressure though, especially with the Baron still. They're just gonna keep it up, even with SOFM down. 35 seconds left on his revive. With the Baron buff, you don't have to overextend to pressure these inhibitors. You see how safe they are just stun. buffing up these cannon minions. Top lane's not close. Bin just jumps 369 to half HP in about two seconds every single time. Karsa back on the map. I mean, can they even leave their base? There's so much pressure with the Baron buff on right now, and that's going to be on for a while. Even just, though you're 5v4 on the map, TES can't leave their base. Just keep them corralled until your jungler respawns here. Jacklift tries to force the Arcane Shift by walking up for the attacks, and it's just not enough. Quan Fung just face checks and says, okay, sure. Q auto and Jackie Love has to flinch. I mean, he's got the safety, right? He's, he's got his TP flash coming. Up. They're trying for a little something at least. 369 is here. Tom Kench over the top as well. They're going to find a double stun, but this could be the fight. 369 finds a double knockup. QSS flash comes out of Juan Fun. Here comes Angel. Saves Jackie Love for a second, but Yunjun's going to be careful. Can they get round two? They have the locket shields. Is it enough? Jackie Love kills Sword Art. As over the top finds two. Angel is low. Can they find Angel? No knockup, but it's enough for Juan Fun. He finds one. Looks for another. They're going to get Jackie Love. There is no damage left. Knight has to do it all. They get Angel. He's got to run. Knight has to run. Cars has to try. Can they get the damage. No one else is on the base. It is just a 3v3. Carson drops. That's sorry, it's Carson running away, but Knight is already gone, and this could be enough. Juan Fung <gasps> tries to take down 369 and does so. Carsa is gone as well. That is the ace. And Soon Ning have done the impossible. G2 in groups, JD Gaming in quarters, and TES in semis. The most impressive run of world so far, and it belongs to Sooning. Their only foe left is Dom Juan Gaming. The hopes of a nation rest with Sooning. You beat everyone else. You've got one test left.
Can you crack under the pressure? Next week, we will find out. Sooning will take down TES, and the hopes of the LPL will rest with Sooning.